Hello and welcome to the Hardcore Gamers Club channel. My name is Daniel and this video is how to manually eject a Xbox One disk drive when you should do it and when you should not do it. I have been getting way too many disk drives in my shop after people go on YouTube and watch a video on how to eject their disk drive and make it to where I have to replace the entire drive thanks to their actions. So let me explain to you what's going on with these drives. Okay, let's, uh, I, I got one hooked up here, let me get some power to it and I'm going to give you a close-up shot of it and we're going to talk about its function and then we're going to show you how to manually eject the disk itself. And let me get this over here too. Okay, so give me a second. We're going to get all bouncy here for a second. So if you get seasick, close your eyes for half a second. Okay, I'm back. Alright, so this is an Xbox One drive. Wait for this focus to come in. There we go. All right. So many of these drives. Let me, I'm gonna eject the disk here. So many of these drives I get coming in, and people are pulling this bar here out from underneath this plastic right here uh, due to recommendations on videos. Crap! Don't do it. You're screwing up your drive. Okay proper operation of this drive is exactly as you see it. Okay, disk spinning, everything's working perfectly fine. Hit the eject, disk comes out, hit the button, disk goes in. Alright, all of these gears have to be in perfect alignment and everything for this drive to work properly. So, let's turn this off and show you how to manually eject the drive. All right, from the outside of the box you can reach the hole that is on the side of the drive. Excuse the video. Oh, there we go. Okay, now, see that one? That one's not nice and clean. Customer didn't try to eject that one. That one's actually off of the drive that I'm showing. Sorry about the focus. Here's one. Where the customer tried to manually eject his disk and destroyed his drive. <sighs> okay. Let me get this thing off here. Alright. So, in order to manually eject a disc, you gotta go through the outside of the box and go through that little hole. It's actually making contact with this little piece of plastic here. Okay. That little piece of plastic manually slides this piece of plastic and all of the associated gears. So let's do it so you can see it. Better get it in the other hand. Alright. So here we go. You push it in. Now this is you got a good a good liberal push. Oops, bent it. See what I mean about a good liberal push? Okay, I'm not even wanting to do it with that. Let me get something a little bit sturdier. There we go. Why ain't it going? Why ain't it going? Customer's gonna shove that in there. They're gonna break these gears. Alright. Alright. That's 
See that? I shoved it in straight even. The first time I pushed it, it went a little teeny bit and then stopped. And then the second time I pushed it, it wouldn't go in. So let's hook this back up to the power. I'm going to put that disc back in. I'm going to show you what's going on. Okay, now we're back to the disc is in the drive. <coughs> if you lost power in your house or your Xbox does not turn on whatsoever and you got a red box game in here, then yeah, go ahead and use the manual eject to get it out so you don't have to pay the overjuice fees and everything. But be very mindful, you need to do it in one swift straight motion. Okay. The second you start, don't stop. You gotta go straight in. Excuse me. See, even I have trouble sometimes. You gotta go straight in, and it takes a good liberal push. But check this out. If your disk drive is going, <laughs> or your disk is stuck inside your drive, you are gonna damage your drive. Do not attempt to use the manual eject if your disk is stuck, stuck inside your drive. The reason why your disk is stuck is likely because, and about 99.9% .9 likely, because these gears have jumped track or something in here is broken and now the gears are not working properly. So you can't manually eject your disc. If you try to manually eject your disc, this is that little bar that you're pushing on. Excuse the autofocus. See right there? Okay. There's a little bar here that goes to that. And when you push that piece in, see this bar over here? When you push that piece in, it pushes the gears. Okay. If your gears are jammed, when you go to pushing that in, you're going to bend. You're not really actually going to bend the bar. Okay. Sorry about the autofocus. You're not actually going to bend this bar, but you are going to bend the plastic both at this gear, slide gear, and at the top of the inside, and this bar will be crooked sideways, making it impossible for your drive to ever be in calibration. Okay? You understand what I'm where I'm getting from? Okay? If you manually force this over, your disc is not going to come out. You're going to bend or break off the plastic that holds this little bar in place, or you're going to break the gears. So whatever you do, do not use the manual eject if your disc is stuck. The manual eject only works if your disc drive is in perfect operating order and everything is right. If your disc is jammed in there, the likelihood of pushing that in it and ejecting the disc is zero well maybe one percent okay but the likelihood of damaging your drive to the point that it has to be replaced is closer to ninety percent ninety nine percent I would think because I get this so many times because it's got to take such a liberal push in order for that to manually work all of them gears they just cr keep cramming cram 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 and break off these teeth here break off the teeth here uh, they strip the little plastic gears that are attached and over the top of metal okay if you do any of that 
you're going to have to replace a whole drive. And, and guess what, guys? You can't just take this drive out and stick another one in. This disk drive circuit board is married to the motherboard of your game system. So if you replace the drive, you have to make certain that you put the proper circuit board back in the drive. In other words, if this was the bad drive, you'd have to take this one out, put it in the new one, which does require soldering. And I'm telling you right now, if you've never soldered before, don't even attempt it. Don't go buy an S soldering iron to go replace this. You're going to destroy your motherboard. 90% of these guys that are trying a drive repair following a YouTube video are going to fail miserably and with all likelihood turn their game system into a permanent download only play games because they destroyed their drive and damage the circuit board of this drive by touching all over the components. Okay, You don't want to do it. Do not manually eject this unless your box has no power, died for some other reason besides a drive issue. If your box is working but your drive is not, your discs aren't coming in and out, do not attempt to use the manual eject. It's as simple as that. Get it to a shop. Trust me, it will be a lot cheaper if you get it to a shop and they can find out what's going on here. A lot of times you can replace these gears very easily with other gears. But if you bend that bar that slides in here, and or damage any of the working in here, which you can, these break off very easy right at the posts, especially this one here which goes on that long gear. They damage very easily, they break right off. Uh, so you are not going to be able to repair this yourself by any video. Check this out. For every video that is out there on disk drive repairs, they say if your drive is doing this, then you need to do this. No, that's not true. It is a simple fact. It is not true. You can have the identical symptoms, iota straight down the line as the guy that's showing you how to fix it in his video and that would not be your problem I guarantee you if you're trying to fix something that is not your problem you are gonna destroy your drive and you're gonna get so frustrated trying to get it to work you're gonna damage a lot of other stuff making it absolutely necessary to replace the drive or impossible altogether to replace the drive. Okay? So, please guys, it would be a lot cheaper just to take it to somebody that is actually qualified. Now, I tell you all the time, take it to a qualified repair shop. What is a qualified repair shop? It damn sure is not GameStop, Play and Trade, or any of the other ones them are shops that sell game systems. They cannot afford a person that actually has a background or schooling in component level electronics. If they could, they wouldn't be selling game systems because that guy can make way more money in repairing other stuff. Okay. There is no money in game systems. That's why you wind up with so many teenagers or game shop owners that have no background in electronics whatsoever learning repairs off of YouTube and then offering their services pretending to be a electronics repairman. Now over the years of me complaining and showing everybody what was going on with them game systems 
some of them have actually gone to school and learned more about the electronics which is nice and I commend them for continuing to try to better better their service but I totally condemn them for learning what they can and cannot do off of the piggy banks of children and their customers as to what they can and cannot do okay it's one thing to do it yourself not having any background in electronics there you know with all likelihood you're going to damage something and it may not work but that's the risk you took but if you take it to GameStop or Play and Trade and their repairman okay and I say that loosely has learned everything he knows off of YouTube videos and portraying himself to be a qualified individual damages your system by putting stupid fan modifications bolts and washers into your game system taking heat guns from Home Depot or Lowe's that's designed to remove paint from furniture that is criminal okay so anytime you take your game system anytime you take your game system to a electronics repair shop that does game systems ask them to show you their proof of education in component level electronics even if it doesn't require component level electronics it requires gears they're going to have knowledge in that okay they are the individuals that will be more than happy and in no way offended and actually love to show off their education okay on my channel I put up proof of my military background and component level electronics You go to the 98 percent of these storefronts around, and unless that guy's an old retired military vet or something that was in avionics or some kind of electronics background work, uh, you're getting a guy that worked on YouTube videos or learned off of YouTube videos, and he can't do anything more than you couldn't do yourself. In fact some of these guys especially like the guy that was working for Play and Trade that murdered my son's system can't do it as good as you could you know the guy that murdered my son's system I swear to God I seen 10 year olds on YouTube do better work because they had a brain the guy that murdered my son's system I swear to God was the stupidest individual in the world and should never have been hired from play and trade you know, if you're a storefront and you're showing videos with a drill drilling through there you need to go to jail okay you know who I am talking about gamer the guy 51 you're a criminal. I've seen, personally seen, that guy wrapping a box in a towel, overheating the box, laughing and giggling about it, saying he's going to go sell it on eBay. I've personally seen him putting bolts in his box. I've personally seen him towel trick a game system in his storefront. by unplugging the fan to overheat the system. Every couple of months he comes out with a new video. Ha 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 look guys. Sorry about the autofocus. Look guys, I got a new repair. It's a new bolt. It's got a different head. It's an Allen or Hex head. 
Dude, what's the difference between a Phillips head bolt, an Allen head bolt, or a hex head bolt? Nothing. Jack squat. Just as destructive, will damage and destroy the system, even if he gets it up and running for a temporary period of time. Every once in a great while, they might get him exactly level and flush, and that game system might last a year. But with all likelihood, we'll never, ever, ever be able to be repaired again, thanks to them bolts. And yes, I'm still complaining about the Xbox 360 and the bolts, because there's still a lot of them out there, and there's still a lot of people bolting them. Yeah, you can't bolt a PS4. Yeah, you can still bolt the Xbox One, and some people are still recommending that because they're moronic idiots that have no background in electronics whatsoever. Okay, there's still people out there recommending taking a heat gun from Home Depot or Lowe's or a hot air soldering iron to rework the board. That is sheer idiocy. Stay safe. Happy gaming, everybody.